Well, since Sonny isn't here this morning, and I don't see any other kids with us, we will forego our children's message this morning. From Deuteronomy chapter 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let me ask you this. How many choices do you think you make each day? 10, 15, 20? Well, the fact is we make hundreds of choices every day. What to wear, what to have for breakfast, whole milk or 2%. Do you want fries with that? The options are endless. And sometimes the, the choices are so many we can't make up our minds. You know, I remember when my wife and I used to take my little sister, this was many years ago, we'd take her to the store and I would tell her, okay, Julie, you can pick out any kind of candy you would like. And she would put her finger to her cheek, and she would pace up and down, back and forth in front of that candy rack, trying to choose which one. And she would do that for a full 20 minutes, struggling to pick the candy, one candy bar out of the many. And that was a choice that really didn't matter. But you know, occasionally, occasionally, we are faced with choices that really do matter. Like when the doctor tried to urge my wife to sign a DNR when I was in the hospital in case my heart stopped. Thankfully, she decided not to do that. Well, in today's Old Testament reading, the Lord offers us some choices as well. And these are choices that really do matter. Here, the Lord says, follow me, and I will bless you in the land that you are about to enter. Love me, he says, and follow my commands, and you will have life, an abundant, prosperous life for you and your children. However, on the reverse side, God also tells them that if they reject him, to go after other gods, they will bring doom, disaster, and death upon themselves. Hmm. Life or death? Good or evil? Seems like a no-brainer, right? Why then did Israel make the wrong choice? Because, you know, they did. They would eventually reject the Lord in spite of everything that he had done for them. They would choose to reject the true God to worship the gods of the people who were in the land before them. And you read this and you wonder what is wrong with these people? I mean, some of them were there when the Lord delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. They saw with their own eyes, how he parted the Red Sea to save them and, and how he provided manna to feed them in the desert. And so why would they now reject the God who saved them to worship idols of wood and stone? But that would be the wrong question. You see, this choice of choosing life or death blessings or curses was not only set before ancient Israel. The Lord sets it before us as well. Choose me. Love and worship me, God says, and you will enjoy my blessings in this world and the next. But reject me for the things of this world and you will bring eternal death and damnation upon yourself. An easy choice. For so it would seem. Why then do we continually reject God's way with all of the blessings that he gives us to follow our own way 
which always leads into trouble? Well, the answer is that we think that we can make better decisions than God, which is short of saying that we think we can do a better job at being God than, well, God. It's been a problem from the time Adam and Eve chose to reject God's law and become a law unto themselves, eating the fruit that was forbidden to them, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why did they do that? Because they thought it would be delicious and would make them become like God. We choose to reject God's will and desire for our lives to follow the desires of our own rotten hearts because we think that it will be greater than what God has to offer. That's the deception that Satan used on Adam and Eve. That's the deception that he uses on us as well. And because of the sinful nature we inherited from Adam and Eve, we fall for it time and time again. Now, some of you might be getting a little nervous right now. Why is Pastor Scott talking about making choices? We Lutherans don't believe it's even possible to make a decision for the Lord. He's preaching heresy up there. But let's be clear. The Lord is clearly presenting us with a decision here. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days. The Lord himself is telling us to choose, and he urges us to choose life. Okay, I think you know that there's a catch in all of this, because we truly are unable to decide of our own free will to love the Lord. Our sinful nature won't allow it. In fact, Luther states it well in his explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. You see, because of sin, we really have no free will when it comes to having faith in the Lord. Oh, we think, we're free to make our own choices and whether or not to believe, but in reality, our will is in bondage to our sinful nature. Left to ourselves, we would reject the Lord every time. So then what hope do we have? Well, without God, none. Without God, we are deaf, dumb, and blind as to the true truth about the Lord and so are damned to eternal death and suffering in hell. Without God, we're bound to follow our own sinful hearts because Satan says the reward will be greater than what God has to offer. Without God, we will always be misled into believing that the forbidden fruit of this life is sweeter than the dictatorial commands of a vengeful absentee God who wants only to make us miserable. Left to ourselves, we remained locked in that mode of thinking with no means of escape. What we need is not merely a change in our behavior. We need a change of heart, and that can only happen by the work of God himself. To complete Luther's explanation to the third article of the Creed, I cannot believe in Jesus or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. You see, it's only through the proclamation of God's word, both law and especially the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we can believe at all. We hear the word of promise and hope. And the Holy Spirit goes to work on our hearts. He plants that seed of faith in us. He waters it and feeds it with his gifts, and he watches it grow and blossom within us. 
faith, the ability to believe in, trust in, and love the Lord is God's work, not ours. In other words, we can only choose God because he has first chosen us. Jesus says this very thing in John chapter 15. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You didn't choose God any more than the ancient Israelites did. He chose you and that fact changes everything. Do you remember as a kid choosing sides for a, a pickup baseball game or a football game? I do, and believe me, there were plenty of times when I was picked last. And I felt awful. Like I really wasn't wanted, but the guy making the last pick, he got stuck with me. Well, when God chose you, he didn't pick you last. He chose you first. In fact, he chose you long before you were born, even before he created the world. God has a plan for your life, and that plan can only be realized if you respond to his gift of grace and follow him. Then he will pour out upon you blessings untold. You see, we can only choose to love God and obey his commands because he has first chosen us and worked a change in our hearts. And in that way, following God isn't really a choice we make at all. Rather, it's a response to the faith that he is already working in us. Okay, so then why do we continue to make bad decisions, just like those Israelites. Because each and every day we choose to go our own way, the way of sin, rather than following the way of the Lord. There lies the problem. And the problem is sin. We are forgiven people because of what Jesus has done for us. But because of what Adam and Eve have done, we still have the desire to sin. It's now in our spiritual DNA. As Luther put it, old Adam was drowned at our baptism, but old Adam swims well. And like a marshmallow and hot chocolate, he keeps popping up to the surface again and again. And that will be our condition for as long as our earthly life lasts. It was that condition that so plagued St. Paul, as he writes in Romans 7, so I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Well, thankfully, the Holy Spirit is always at work within us. Whenever we wander off the path of light into the dark shadows of sin, he convicts our heart, he plagues our conscience, and through confession and absolution, he draws us back into the light and love of God's grace once again. You know, old Adam may swim well, but confession and absolution dunks him back under those baptismal waters once again. And that is the one way in which uh, St. Paul says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, because he alone can deliver us from this body of sin and death, and through the forgiveness that he earned us in the victory of his death and resurrection, he has done just that. Choices. We make hundreds of them each day, but the greatest choice ever made was the day that God chose you and made you his forever child. May the Lord continue to bless you with his goodness, blessings, 
and grace as you follow him. For he is indeed your life in length of days, even Jesus Christ our Lord. To him be the glory now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Just a reminder that we do have our uh, places to leave your offering, the little receptacles near the sanctuary door. Uh, let's give God glory for everything that he has blessed us with. But Heavenly Father, we do come to you today and, and praise you and give you thanks that you have chosen us. Lord, you have also blessed up us with every gift of heaven and with so many of our earthly possessions as well. Lord, in thanksgiving from these, we return a small portion back to you that others may know your gift of grace as well. In Jesus' name, amen. We now prepare our hearts for the service of Holy Communion in which God again pours out his blessings upon us in the very body and blood of his son, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament to my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Mike, the body of Christ given for you. Kevin, the body of Christ given for you. Gil, the body of Christ given for you. Take drink, the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, preserve you in the true faith from now until life everlasting. Amen.
Welcome to the Lord's table. Deb, the body of Christ, given to you. And the body of Christ, given for you. Marcy, the body of Christ, given for you. Jesus loves you. May his blessings always be upon you. The body of Christ, given for you, Morgan. Alexis, the body of Christ, given for you. Chuck, the body of Christ, given for you. Sally, the body of Christ, given for you. Fritz, the body of Christ, given for you. Karen, the body of Christ, given for you. Dean, the body of Christ, given for you. Kathleen, the body of Christ, given for you. Burn, the body of Christ, given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Lord, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Deb, the body of Christ.